Hi, and welcome to the first part of my three-part uh, video series on uh, how to repair a pool pump. So for this one, um, I've got a Stay Right one horsepower motor. It's model number P6R A6E-205L. Uh, now I just want to preface before I start this, um, I'm not associated with any pool store. I'm not a pool professional, so please try this at your own risk. Um, I am, however, I've done a lot of research on uh, how to do this yourself and uh, scouring all the internets and uh, across all different videos. I figured I'd try to put these uh, videos together just to try to share the knowledge I've learned and hope to uh, save you a few extra uh, dollars in your pocket. So before I get started, uh, like I said, I've got a, uh, I got a stay right motor, one horsepower. Um, there's typically uh, two things you want to do prior, uh, well, two reasons why you might want to uh, take on this venture like I'm doing. One is just uh, due to the regular maintenance. Um, as you'll see, we get to probably video, uh, the second video. Um, is sometimes there's impeller or diffuser needs to be inspected and maybe replaced as well as a shaft seal for regular maintenance. Um, the second part that you may want to do this is the reason that I'm about to show you. And that's because your pull pump may sound like this. So did you hear that loud buzzing sound? And what that loud buzzing sound is, at least I've been able to attribute to based on all my research, is bad bearings. So what I'm about to venture on is, um, is eventually replacing the bearings, and you'll see that in the second video. And in the third video, I will talk about putting it all back together and priming the pump. So for this first video, before we need to do it right, we need to be able to take it apart. So I'm going to do a walk step by step with you and show you how to actually take apart uh, your motor to be able to uh, either take it into a shop or uh, actually do it yourself and do the repair. So before I get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut power. I'm going to cut power to everything. Shut that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off the lid of the uh, trap cover here. And I'm just going to leave it sitting. And we see here there's a little O-ring in here, and we'll just leave that here. But just for your knowledge, uh, this little O-ring costs anywhere from like, uh, I've seen, I've seen where from like $9 up to uh, even like $22 online, just in case you want to replace that yourself. And I'll just leave it sitting there. And just put the trap cover aside. Now the next thing we're going to do we got a metal clamp right here. I'm actually going to just take this knob and start twisting it. Now when I do, you're going to start seeing a lot of water gushing out from underneath. And so, just going to start taking this off. There's a lot of threads here. So I'm just going to set the knob aside. So I've lied a little bit. You can see there's no water yet. Part of that is I guess I've got a pretty good seal going here. And so I'm going to actually separate. I'm going to separate this motor and this, uh, gosh, I can't even think of the piece right now, from the body of the, uh, of the pump. And then eventually we should start seeing water coming out. So you can see all the water came out, and there's this little, uh, once again, another O-ring here. It's a lot bigger, and it just sits here. Now this O-ring, uh, once again, this would be a time if you're in here, you may want to replace it. I've actually seen any of these um, anywhere from like $5 to, um, to say $16 in any pool pump store. Now for this particular motor, um, I've actually got the, uh, the product manual, and I'll post it underneath the video in case you want to see it. It has the model numbers for all these individual parts in case you want to look it up and replace it. But I suggest you do the same for your particular motor. So I'm going to leave this sitting here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, um, a flathead screwdriver and I'm going to just unscrew this enough to remove these two bonding wires. So 
So these are all just moved. I'm just going to set them to the side. And now next thing we're going to want to do, you're going to have something soft. In my case, I've got a little aerial boogie board because we're going to set the motor up and we're going to set it on its face. Therefore, we can get the electrical components and disconnect it from the junction box. So right there is the diffuser. I'm actually just going to set up on the diffuser, and that's why you don't really want to crack that thing. So that's why I'm going to set it up. Now I've got the back of the electrical casing here. Once again, it's just two more screws. And I just need a flathead screwdriver to get access to. Alright, so we've now removed the back here. We can see we've actually got access to the electrical the electrical compartment. So what we've got here is we've actually got a capacitor. And uh, before we begin any disconnecting the wire, you're going to want to discharge this. So a lot of people bring a towel, because I guess in the past, some, from some of the videos I've read, these have been known to explode. So what we're going to do is just cover up with a towel. And if you want to come around here with the camera, Kind of zoom inside there, there's going to be two little terminals. You just want to take a flathead screwdriver, run it across both these, and it'll discharge the capacitor, and therefore we'll be able to disconnect. So I'm just going to take a towel, disconnect, no explosions, thankfully. Just make sure touch around enough where you think it's a pretty good discharge. So I want to zoom in here. Got the three electrical wires here that we're going to just want to unscrew these things. I don't know if the polarity matters on these two, however I've already taken a picture with the cell phone camera just to make sure that I get them in the right spot because I like to put things back where I got them. So I'm just going to start disconnecting these three. Now you're actually going to want to take and unscrew this portion and this will allow you to pull these out. I'm about to do some more unscrewing here. You have to straighten them out. So you can see these wires are pretty pretty hard to pull through here, especially after they've been in there for a while. Once we get them out, I'll just set this aside. And now your pull motor and stuff has been completely removed from the system, and uh, you're able to either A, take it into a shop, or B, start beginning the work yourself on repairing it. So uh, that concludes my video for part one of the series. Uh, like I said, part two, we're actually going to see me... Uh, you're just going to miss out on me struggling to carry this over to a workbench or portion and then after that we're going to start taking this apart and I'll start showing you all the innards and uh, eventually replace this bearings and hopefully get a silent motor. So thanks and uh, see you in part two.